Welcome, teacher, to the Let Your Light Shine podcast. If you're searching for the freedom and permission to design the life you love as a teacher, you're in the right place. I'm on a mission to help teachers just like you build their own dream school or homeschooling business. In this present day, the world needs you, teacher friend, to step out in faith and give students an education they love and so deserve. In this podcast, I will teach you how to start a fulfilling and profitable homeschooling business that lights you up. I'm Mackenzie Oliver, former elementary teacher and instructional coach, gone homeschool teacher and business builder. I'm here to empower you to step outside the classroom and choose the experiences, the curriculum, and all the moments that put a smile on your face and your students. Does it seem like a dream? Well, it did to me until God opened the doors and made it reality. Together, we are breaking through fears and moving the crowd. So get out your notebook, sharpen your pencil. It's time to get your teach on. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Summer of Many Souls. I'm coming at you with a heart full of compassion, with a heart full of joy and peace as we enter into this next school season. And I want to share with you that I know what it feels like to have been working during the summertime and building a school. This summer actually came to me in a whirlwind. I did not realize how much energy and time it took in order to grow our school and to keep up with the demands of our micro school. And I share that with you because I know that there are many of you guys who are starting out and you're just working through this mustard seed of faith, just like I was. And here I am telling you today how much our school has grown. And I hope that that really inspires you and keeps you motivated to keep going. I share this testimony with you through this summer of what it was like I did not realize when it came to just how structuring my summer was going to be different compared to years in the past. And I'm not at all regretful. I'm not at all sad or ashamed of of the work that we've put into the school because it needed to happen. And it all pays off in rich dividends years and years to come. So if you're someone who is laboring a lot right now and you're like, oh my gosh, this world of entrepreneurship is just taking me by storm, I want you to know that it will pan out and it will ease up. We just are going into a busy season of building a school. But eventually, it will subside and it will pan pan out and you will learn systems and you will learn how to delegate and you will make the process so much more streamlined and simple. Trust me when I tell you as we're going into year four, the incredible growth, the incredible mindset shift that I've had to take that I didn't even realize that I was ever going to need. I really just had a little dream that's turned into something that has physically manifested into something way outside what I what I what I really thought was going to happen. We all have a dream, we all envision small little small little bits here, small little bits there, but this really can be an incredible opportunity as you move through life knowing that what you are creating is going to not only bless you but bless so many people. This summer I spent the summer com- um completing the yes prize grant proposal. I spent the summer coaching many, many teachers and teachers to be entrepreneurs. I've spent the summer taking care of my daughter's health, which we've never had to do that before. We've always been relatively healthy the past 10 years, honestly, barely ever went to the doctor. And this summer we have had to take a lot more time with doctor visits and just a lot of caring for our daughter who is in high school. We also did not anticipate our daughter going to nationals for volleyball. So that was a week out of the summer that we were not anticipating. I was not anticipating the growth of our school and how much it really took to hire. Interviewing over the phone, over 30 applicants, meeting people face to face, then onboarding and hiring 
Also, our state passed the Universal Saving Education Savings Account, which caused us to not only learn about this new savings account that was offered to families, but then educate families on their right and their incredible blessing to take hold of a scholarship so that they could homeschool their children and use those funds to come to Lighthouse Learning. So we did not anticipate how many families did not know about this incredible opportunity and then the amount of education that we played a part in teaching families how to take hold of this scholarship. We also are moving into a new location. That is another growth spurt. We also have hired not just more teachers, more support staff. We are buying another vehicle. We are interviewing triple, quadruple the amount of families that I've ever had to in the past, spending really good quality time interviewing them, meeting with them, teaching them about our program, educating them on the universal savings account, teaching them how to onboard invoicing, a new invoicing system, all of this I was not anticipating. It's like, yeah, we're going to grow this year. We're going to get more students. Whoa, let's just backtrack and let's, let me just, let me just say, I'm going to teach you guys how to do all of this. Let me just let the dust settle for a minute because I've got so many systems and processes that have helped through this transition. But at the same time, I've got to let the dust settle before I actually package it up and teach you guys how to do it because I want this to be an extremely powerful force for you to take hold of so that you know that when you start saying that you're going to build a school, even if it starts out in your living room, you have no idea where this actually will take you and you don't have to be afraid of it. I will say that I used to be very, very afraid because I didn't know how much time and energy it was going to take. But let me just tell you, I just kept walking. I just kept stepping. And I just kept saying, I will not bow down to fear. I'm going to step into what God has called me to do. God, take the will. God, help me. I've spent many, many mornings praying, meditating, reflecting, journaling, reading God's word, setting outside, restoring myself so that I could continue pushing through the race. And I share that with you because you may just be starting out. You may be where I am. You're not alone. And if you're just starting out, the possibilities are truly incredible. And so I pray that you stick with it. I pray that you stay within our community. I pray that you help yourself in so many ways by investing in a coach, investing in the materials that you need, investing in yourself, reading, working on your faith, asking God, God, teach me, how do I increase my faith? Because I am on a vast mission field. How do I increase my faith to keep up with what it is to give me, God, give me the mindset of you. Give me the mindset of you because God has already created it for us. We just need to grab a hold of it. And in order to do that, we have to have faith and believe in him that he will make a way. And so I just want you to know how powerful it is for you to take this time right now and restore yourself and improve yourself so that you can step into not only an incredible career as a teacher, but an entrepreneur. I want you to know that taking care of yourself is absolute, is absolutely essential, not only for you, but for your family. And I hope that right now, as we are in the last week of July, and no matter when you are listening to this, that you really have a plan of action for taking care of yourself. And maybe it's not a legitimate written down plan of how you're going to take care of yourself, but I hope that you always build in time to become very self-aware of what you need. Because I am definitely one that have time blocked and had things on my calendar and had things on my Google calendar and had my work time set up on my door so that my girls knew it. But then there were times where I would say, I can't. I cannot do everything that I said I was going to do today. I just can't. And I'm going to rest in the fact that that's okay. And it will get done at some point. I hope 
that as we enter into this new school year, that you will give yourself grace to take care of yourself. And I hope that you do that so that you can eliminate, reduce, and be proactive in preventing burnout. I hope that you will really pay attention every morning whenever you see yourself either being like, okay, today's the day, I'm going to seize the day, I'm going to get up, I'm going to do it. Take advantage of that. And I'm not saying that we need to be driven by our emotions, but what I am saying is that we need to be driven by a keen awareness of what we need in that moment. We can make all the plans, we can write all the things in our journals, we can write all the things in our Google Calendar, but when the day comes and life hits you and your kids need you and your husband needs you and the washer doesn't work in and the refrigerator went out, your dog's got to go to the vet, you need to build in a system for taking care of yourself. You know why? Because you are a positive role model. Taking care of yourself sets a very positive example, not only for your children, but for your students, for the people that you work with. Having self-awareness, having a strong sense of well-being, and managing your stress effectively is what's most important. I hope that as you enter into this season, that you really create a standpoint of increased energy and focus, that you prioritize your physical and mental well-being, getting regular sleep, I mean adequate sleep, getting regular exercise, having a balanced diet. What do you need as you start back to school? How many hours of sleep do you need? How much exercise are you going to have? And How are you really going to prioritize that? What are you going to do when you wake up and you don't feel like exercising? Are you going to beat yourself up? Or are you going to put something else into place that makes you feel good, like reading a book for a longer period of time, which is absolutely what I've been doing. I wake up in the morning and I know that I need to exercise. And there have been more days over the past week that I have decided, no, I'm actually not going to exercise. I'm going to set out in the sun early in the morning and I'm going to read a book that is nourishing my mind. Nourishing my mind. I'm reading a book for my mind and I'm reading a book for business, both of which I know I need to cultivate in order to be best for myself, best for my family, and best for the people that I serve. And so With that comes days where I say, I'm not going to work out, but I'm going to work my mind. Or I'm just going to say, you know what? Today, I'm not going to get straight into my office and work on my computer. I'm going to go on a bike ride. I'm going to go on an adventure. And I'm going to ride as far as I can over an hour. And I'm going to go into a new neighborhood or a new little city and see what I can find. I've been doing that. And it's actually been so fun. I feel like I'm a little kid again. And I get my exercise, it makes me feel so rejuvenated, and I come back and I'm able to be more productive. But when I said I was going to start working at 9 o'clock, actually didn't start happening until around 11. And I was like, you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because I know that I'm going to be better when it comes to serving my family and the people that I'm going to be meeting with for the rest of the day, whether it's coaching clients, whether it's families, whether it's my team. And so... I hope that as you are entering this season of back to school, that you are preventing all components of burn out. I have even told my staff, listen, that week that we move into the school, we're working from this time to this time, from nine to three. That's it. We go home. That's it. Because I know as a teacher, I used to spend till 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, come back the next morning. No, we are a team. We're going to help each other. And when the day is done, it's done because I want you to prioritize your family and your well-being. And that is so important to me because we were never taught that in the educational system. We were not, we're not taught that in the, in the Western culture. We are taught to burn the midnight oil. We're taught to 
work super hard to hustle, rise and grind. And that is not, we are not factory. We are not factory machinery. We are caregivers. We are school builders. We deserve the opportunity to fill our cups up so that we can fill up others. I pray that you have continued professional growth, focusing not just on investing in professional development, but actually attending workshops, actually attending conferences, actually networking to expand your knowledge. Think about how you want to do that over the course of the year. Many people in our Facebook group are asking about conferences and networking events. And I would say that if you are one of those people or if you're not in our group, look at what people are saying that they're going to be doing this year and start putting them on your calendar and put little sticky stickers on your on your um, calendar of an airplane or something to get yourself excited that you're going to go pay for that ticket and you're going to book a flight and you're going to get to that place so that you can fill yourself up. And here's the other part. I hope that you really, really, really work on your emotional resilience. Teaching and building businesses can come with emotional challenges, dealing with difficult situations or learning something new, maybe a stressful situation. You can build emotional uh, resilience by allowing yourself to cope better with challenges and maintaining a positive outlook by allowing yourself to rest and finding someone who is positive to talk to and is a positive role model for you. Get yourself away from the negative people. And if you work from ne- with negative people, I'm telling you right now, you need to let them know, I do not deal with negativity. That will be the death of this school. That will be the death of this business. And, and that will be the end. That will be the end of this because you have the authority to say, I will not accept this. I will not accept anything that steals my peace and stand firm in that. Stand firm that you will not let anybody steal your peace and you will not let negativity come into your life. That is how you stay in the game. I love you guys. I am praying for all of our community, and knowing that together we are an incredible force of change. Hey, hey, teacher friend. Thanks so much for listening to today's show. I pray it inspired you, touched you, or challenged you in some way because we are making big shifts and using our teaching gifts for God's glory like never before. I'm so grateful for you. The number one way you can support this show is to leave a written review on Apple Podcasts and also share this with another teacher. Come join me in the Virtual Teachers Lounge, known as the Teacher Let Your Light Shine Facebook group. Until next time, keep shining your teacher light. The world needs you.